And now, for our feature presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? You're listening to Straight Talk with Dean and Mark. Call in to join the conversation at 646 646- Six six eight eight three nine three. Welcome to Straight Talk with Dean and Mark. It's the Six Man Dean Geronimo in the studio with Mark Lee. And we welcome you to yet another exciting episode of our show. And just like that, ladies and gentlemen, we have come to almost the end of the summer. Well, it's the last Monday in August, I should say. But it's the Six Man Dean Geronimo, and as always, I'm in the studio from NJ to NC. My right hand man, Mark Lee. So, Mark, tell me what's good in your neck of the woods, my brother. Well, for one thing, I don't know if whether it's the first day of school where you are, but it was definitely the first day of school here. So there was a whole lot more school buses on the road, and it actually caused me to be. Almost late. Fortunately, one of my coworkers saw me and everything because the bus did not get to the usual stop till almost uh, 10 minutes till it's time to be at the c- central station where we go kind of the in-between point in order to head to work and everything. And I've looked at the clock. Okay. I'm like, wait a minute. It's 750. I got to be on the downtown to hit the number uh, one bus by eight o'clock. There's no way this driver's going to make it in 10 minutes flat. So then I realized that it was the first day of school for many of our kids here. So, you know, that meant the school buses were on the road. The parents were on the road. It just threw everybody off to a little bit. So uh, definitely uh, folks were getting prepared for school, getting school supplies over the weekend and things of that nature. Because you know how we are. We sometimes got to wait to the last second to figure out what to we're going to get minute. and things of that nature. <laughs> <laughs> you know, everybody wants to wait to the last minute to spend whatever they got to spend it on. You know, we just, whether it's buying food, whether it's buying school supplies, we just, as general folks, I don't even want to put it on any class of folks. I just think it's a human condition. A lot of times we like to wait to the last second in order to get things done figured that it's just going to magically happen or something along those lines. But, you know, you still got to get out there, fight the crowds, and do what you got to do. But I know that there are some folks that are planners, and those planners, they jump on it, like, probably as soon as school ends. But I do not think that is the majority of the population. That's true, man. Um, <laughs> you talk about procrastination? Yep. That's one of the biggest things that all a whole lot of different things. Now, people like waiting to the last minute, not sure if they want to do something, you know, not sure if they should do something. And then when it's time to get it done, it's like, oh, wait, but I need to, and I need to, and I need to. And it holds everything up. But that's some people. That's not all. So shout that's out true. to all the people who, who do it before it's supposed to be done. Or the ones that are ready to go when the light turns green, you know. So, rest of y'all, you got to get up on your game, Jack, because um, it can hold up a whole lot of stuff, and it can be frustrating for the rest of us. <laughs> oh, that's very true. I know it can be frustrating for those that are planners and things of that nature. There's no doubt about that. that it can get very frustrating. Now, the other things that were going on, you know, there's always busy things happening here in the Bull City. So, on uh, Friday... One of the uh, groups that meets at the Hay Tides, Bright Central, they were having what they call a vision night. So it's basically just letting folks know what the church is, the direction the church is going in, things of that nature. Of course, there was a little bit of uh, free food. In this case, it was pizza provided and some uh, confectionaries and things of that nature. So that was on Friday. And then on Saturday, there was a play that basically was called Convicted. And it was uh, two ladies that were having a trial about whether they could actually prove to God that they were Christians. And, of course, you know, like a lot of plays, particularly Christian plays, it had um, some uh, acts and some scenes that were definitely a little bit uh, predictable and things of that nature. And it also definitely had some uh, singing involved. you got to have the singing involved in a gospel play and things of that nature. But I thought it was an overall good production. They actually came from the D.C. area. It was a small crowd, but those that came enjoyed the production that they got. And I actually talked to the uh, playwright 
uh, who is also, I believe she's a playwright and a director. So we're going to see about trying to get them on an upcoming edition of the show so they can talk about kind of the process that they went through and things of that nature. I was a little bit thrown off by the Dallas scene. And by that, I mean that at one point, I think it was toward the end, of course, it was all nothing but a dream. So, you know, you go through this whole trial, go through all of this kind of stuff, and it turns out at the end that it's a dream sequence. And uh, for those of you that follow the old nighttime soap operas, you remember that that was one of the famous episodes of Dallas where, you know, somebody, a major character, was supposed to have been killed off, and then it wound up being a dream sequence. So I do know that that is kind of a go-to plot twist that folks use. And then uh, I did not see her. Maybe some of the folks, if we can get them to call in, that are listening, hopefully they can tell us if they're listening about how it was. But Miss Camilla was in town, so she did do her campaign uh, stop for the uh, one of our packs here, the pack that kind of centers around african American affairs and things of that nature. So she was the keynote speaker. I understand she spoke for about 30 minutes or so and definitely got on folks about uh, race relations and some of her other platform issues. And I was just watching PBS special, and they were saying that for the next debate, I think we're up to, because uh, Mr. Castro just qualified. So out of the 21, we're up to 10. A few folks have already dropped out. So they're thinking that the uh, field will start dwindling down now, both because of uh, amounts raised um, you know, the leading candidates are definitely raising the most money, that being folks like Biden, Harris, uh, well, not so much Harris. I think Harris might be in fifth place in terms of raising money, but definitely Biden, Warren, uh, Sanders, and folks like that. So they're basically saying that there are, in terms of the double-digit numbers, I think they gave five candidates that were around that double-digit. The three that I just named, Camilla's floating around that double-digit market, everything, uh, definitely um, – Peters, I think, floating around a little bit around that area as well. But uh, outside of that, we might be whittling down to maybe we'll get to the point where there's only 10 Democrats or so running by maybe September or October. So uh, I'm thinking maybe more like October or November. But we may be at that point where we're finally whittling down and figuring out who's actually going to go up against Trump since he's been raising money, I think, pretty much since he got in office. Because I think he's been probably not doing that much running of the country, but running money so he can have a second term. Because I don't know that he's doing much more than raising money. At least that's my opinion. I think he spends more time having these fundraisers. And I wouldn't be surprised if he didn't have his first fundraiser maybe a week after he got inaugurated. Well, it's nothing to say that you can't. You know what I mean? And I hope that it does dwindle down because the more people will lend to more confusion. I am neither Democrat nor Republican, but looking at it from the outside, like if y'all really want to win this, you know what I mean? Don't put, put your best candidate out. Don't put my top three or my top five. He's only one man. And it was because of, and I say it all the time, like the electoral college decided who was going to be the president. Which, to me, that antiquated uh, thing needs to be eliminated. Because I, I agree, didn't like her. I agree, it needs to be eliminated. But also, I think you might have posted it on our page that recently there was some decision made that you could actually go against what your state said that you were going to vote. So that even makes it uh, yeah. even more antiquated. The fact that you can sit I, there and, you know, because yeah. you don't like the person that was picked, you can just sit there and go, like, oh, I don't feel like voting somebody else. So that's kind and of that, like, yep, even makes that, it even more antiquated. That article actually said that the Electoral College has the right to vote against the public's wishes. So we saw it happen twice so far in our lifetime when George W. Bush became president. And now with Donald Trump. So, technically, we go out and vote. And it, like you said, if the delegates wake up on one side of the bed and say, you know what, I'm just going to vote for this guy right here. And that's the person who becomes the president. Like I said, I didn't like Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump. But when you look at things for what they are, she beat him by 3 million votes, which means she should have become the next president of the United States. 
But the makes sense to me. I mean, it, yep, it makes sense to me that it should be the popular vote. Yeah, you know I mean, what's that old saying that we were taught in civics class and everything? But if the electoral college gets away from that, but I was always taught, and I think you were as well. You know, it was one person. We won't say one man, but one person, one vote. So if that's the case, then the most, the person that wins the most votes should win the election. Is that the way it was? In any other thing that you do, whether it's something as simple as school board, I mean, or even student body president, for those of you that might have served office in your schools and everything, everything from student body president on up to um, governors and mayors and everything like that, it has been determined by whoever gets the most votes. And that seems to me that that's the most logical way to do things. It should, and in a democracy, that's how it should work. However, it's not only our government, it's trickled down to local organizations that are national organizations, and they say, well, you know, send your delegates to the national meeting to vote on who's going to be in this position, who's going to be in that position. I mean, we say we told the delegate how we want them to vote, but technically, unless we go in there with them and vote, you know, I don't believe in faith and trust with people who I don't, that are not, you know, yeah, we're in the same organization, but can I really trust you? You know, you can't trust everybody. And then sometimes you can, and sometimes you can't. So it becomes very um, difficult when they take away the ability for each person to cast that vote and for each person to, you know, say, Hey, look, this is who I would like for whatever reason it may be, and whoever has the most votes at the end should be the individual who elevates to the position, not, you know, backdoor meetings and this group is going to link with this group for more voting strength and all of this. It's a big game of I want to be important. And at the end, sometimes you put the wrong person in a place of importance and you get mad at what you get back. Because then you sit there wondering why the parents are doing what they're doing, whether it's what they're doing with the wilderness. There's a lot of people are complaining about what Trump is doing with the wildlife and as well as just uh, properties as well. Because I understand that he's even thinking about, uh, I've heard some conversations about privatization, even for like some of our national parks. And I'm sitting there going like, wait a minute. I think I saw that right. on Facebook as well, where people were talking about that you could sit there and actually privatize and try to have these things that are definitely national monuments that people know because of their um, historical significance and their significance as part of the North Carolina, I mean, the uh, North American landscape and everything. But now we're going to talk about that you can come there and do all kinds of new things in here that could destroy what is their uh, their beauty and what they're all about. I mean, just imagine what they could do if we allowed them with both uh, the forests that are up there in California, those that are still standing and are historical, or what they could do with things like the Grand Canyon. It's definitely very historical. I mean, I could see certain people trying to put up uh, like a hotel in the middle of the Grand Canyon. <laughs> that shit collapsed and everybody did. You know what? But then again, that's the train of thought. You know, um, but it is about the dumbest person to ever sit in the office of president. I think he said he was going to shoot some missiles at a hurricane to keep it from, uh, to hold it back. Now, I don't know what he's been watching on TV, but between that and the implementation of a space force, somebody's getting high, bro, and it ain't us. <laughs> <laughs> he's smoking some tough shit uh, down there in D.C., bro, because... I thought about it, and I posted it the other day. I said, Space Force. Now, can you imagine somebody walking around? So, yeah, I belong to the Space Force. So, what do you do? Um, yeah, we, we patrol outer space. Really? Like, huh? Dude, this is not Star yeah, Wars. Like, you know what I'm saying? The Death Star is not <laughs> sitting out there in the Earth. So, oh, golly. What you know, I actually thought about that when I was watching something on PBS recently, and I forgot which one of the PBS news shows I was watching. But they were talking about, um, and it might have been out there in uh, the middle of the country, like maybe Arizona or something like that. But it's basically one of our major airlines and how they are preparing to ship people off into private trips up to space. 
And I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, one, I don't know that I 